I cracked open the last egg, expecting another disappointing, lifeless mess of viscera. The creature fell onto the table with a wet slap, and, to my surprise, it was moving, breathing, living. After years of failed experiments, I had finally hatched one. Alive, amorphous in shape, confusing even to gaze upon. But nonetheless, the ingredients it was made from were human. It was ravenous, gluttonously devouring anything I put in front of it. It ate by surrounding the food, and then absorbing it through the surface of its skin. At first, I just fed it crumbs, or any insects I could find around the lab. Then I moved on to scraps of steak, then a whole rotisserie chicken. Soon it was neighborhood cats, then large dogs. Whenever it wasn't being fed, it croaked a continuous guttural screech in demands for more. I was running out of things to feed it. He won't stop crying. I haven't left his side, other than to gather more for him. I read to him. I care for him. I love him. I know he doesn't look like it, but deep down, he's human, just like anyone else. Er, at least he's made from the same stuff. He can't express himself in any way that I can understand, but when I look into what's beginning to take the shape of an eye, I know he sees me as his father. Why won't he stop crying? He's hungry. He's in pain. He must be so lonely in that container. I need to be with him. I'm going to open the door. Either I comfort him through his hunger for a moment, while I think of another source of food, or he takes what he needs. If he can take me, I know he'll finally be ready to leave the nest. This is the only remaining information describing what appears to be a novel anomalous creature. This entity was first documented by Eduardo Valdez Evia. The info was found inside of a heavily damaged notebook, located inside of an abandoned laboratory in, big shocker, Ohio. The only place that reeks of piss worse than the back rooms. Guys, seriously, who opened the door? It's closed for a reason. He knows he isn't allowed in here. This abomination is the result of a deranged scientist attempting to create a human egg. You see, this researcher lost both his wife and newborn son in a complication during childbirth, and vowed to find a way to make sure no one had to risk their life to start a family. It's kind of wholesome until you realize that before that, I just said the words human egg. With a chicken's egg as a blueprint, he constructed an egg structure using human DNA. He used keratin, like in your fingernails, for the shell. On the inside, there was a human yolk surrounded by a nutrient paste. The egg was fertilized via artificial insemination, where the scientist injected the egg with a syringe filled with human semen. The processes for exactly how the scientist created and fertilized this human egg has been lost, as the vast majority of his notes were destroyed in the creature's escape. Personally, I'm kind of glad that we aren't reading how he got the semen. Most of these monstrosities were failed experiments as they either didn't successfully fertilize the human egg, or had complications resulting in what could only be called an external miscarriage. On the occasion that something did hatch, the resulting creature looked nothing like a human fetus. Their anatomy was nonsensical, borderline random. Some looked like human skin worms, some like meat spiders. Most didn't survive for more than a few minutes outside the egg. That one looks like he's doing okay. But <laughs> oh, <laughs> never mind. After countless failed experiments, one finally survived for more than a few minutes. It had a great appetite and consumed anything it was in front of. As it grew, it began to look like a blob of pulsating skin. Because its basis was human, it started developing large, human-like sensory organs. Eventually, the researcher let his guard down, thinking that the creature loved him too much to kill and consume him. Just like every time someone lets their guard down and tries to let love in, it was his doom. The homunculus, which was the size of an obese house cat at this point, latched onto the scientist's face, suffocated him, and absorbed his body. After which, the gelatinous monster proceeded to feed on the surrounding human population. You may be wondering, what the hell are these abominations? This monster belongs to a family of anomalies called amalgamators. Creatures like the blob, the thing, the stuff, SCP-001, Discord mods. By the way, has anyone taken the name The Goo? No? Okay, this monster's name is The Goo. The characteristic that these creatures are known for is constant consumption and growth. Anomalies of this nature function like a giant predatory single-celled organism. They're essentially a fully independent cancer cell. The creature consumes prey through absorption. They continually feed, immediately reallocating the biomass they consume to be a part of their own being. And because of this, they grow at a staggering pace, almost matching the volume they consume. 
These entities are inherently problematic for whatever environment they occur in, because they will consume until they've replaced everything they can reach. Instances of the goo are incredibly intelligent apex predators. They gain the skills and memories of anything they consume, and they can use this to more effectively hunt others in the same group. Not only this, but in a human-engineered world, this can prove incredibly useful. Case in point, if you need to hunt people in a building, I'd pick the brain of the architect. This iteration of the goo consumed the city's wastewater treatment manager, and used the sewer systems to move throughout the town seamlessly, and managed to consume the entire population of a suburb before it was finally dispatched. The one caveat is that this family of anomalies has an incredibly high rate of metabolism, as it's constantly expending energy in order to make more of itself. Pair this with the fact that they don't have the ability to convert their own body mass into energy, only the other way around, and you have a recipe for rapid metabolic starvation. That's basically the only reason you aren't all a part of a giant earth-encompassing slimy meatball right now. These creatures can easily sustain themselves when they're small, but the larger they get, the more difficult it is to consume enough biomass to sustain their fat ass. This results in the vast majority of these species dying of starvation before they reach more than a city block in diameter. However, they rarely do become large enough to try and lobby to get additional seats on airplanes for the price of one ticket. While it's incredibly hard for this creature to sustain itself at a colossal size, it has a few other tricks up its sleeve. For example, when threatened, starving, or maybe even bored, this creature under goes rapid reproduction via mitosis. For you, this would be like if every time you strangled your snake slash smashed your cashew, you would split into two smaller versions of yourself. It can use mitosis to create multiple, more manageable versions of itself. It often uses this reproduction strategy to divide and conquer in cases where there are multiple different human populations. In one instance of a goo outbreak, the entity chose to undergo mitosis repeatedly and lied dormant so people thought that there was just a weird influx of meat puddles for some reason. The goo chose to not take action for an extended period of time, and the local human population assumed the goo puddles to be harmless. Eventually, humans, as they always do, harvested and sold the infectious meat puddles, this time as a source of food. You can probably see where that went, as everyone in that human population is now goo. The goo also has another, even more dastardly version of reproduction. This entity is capable of making reproductive nodules. The goo disperses these spore-like nodules into the air, and when touched or inhaled by a living animal, it infects and then converts them into another iteration of the goo. This is usually how one goo outbreak starts from another, as these spores can be carried intact for miles on the air. So remember folks, next time you see a blob of flying cum, don't eat it. Its only weakness seems to be extreme temperatures. So if you find yourself cornered by this thing, you gotta melt it or freeze it. Y'all ever do that thing as a kid where you take hairspray and a lighter and turn whatever is in front of you into ash? No? Well, if the YouTube monetization bots ask, I didn't tell you about that. The one that got out this time was eventually dispatched when the Bureau of Anomalous Containment brilliantly lured it into a populated children's hospital, locked it in, and burned it down. And they all lived happily ever after. Unless they were a hospital or a children. The end. This video was based on artwork by Eduardo Valdez Evia. They're a great artist and you should go check out all their things. If you like this video, you should like, comment, and subscribe with all notifications enabled, or I'll feed you to the goo. I'd like to thank Biodegradable for editing this video. They're a great editor and you should go watch all of their things. Shout out the inner circle. Love y'all. Oh,